I had been in mental hospitals, uh, several mental hospitals from the time I was 13 till I was 16. I was told when I was 16 that I would be there for another two years and then maybe they would release me, but more likely they would send me back to the state hospital. I decided those weren't very good odds and had the opportunity to escape, which is what I did. Uh, the reason why I got involved with the mental patient self-help movement was for a number of reasons, uh, one of which because I was very angry. I had an incredible sense of outrage at the fact that uh, I was treated so badly for those three years, the fact that my adolescence had been virtually taken away from me. They stripped her almost naked, her hands and feet they tied. They pumped her body full of drugs, how my angel cried. Two AIDS. Um, they took me into um, what was called in hospital this jargon of Rockland State Hospital. It was called a section. It was this big bathroom. Um, and they told me to take off all my clothes. And um, they took off. They said, we have to take your clothes to be labeled. And because I was in, had been in this private hospital, I had name tapes in all my clothes. Uh, and I said, well, I already have name tapes in all my clothes. And they said, no, we have to take your clothes off to be labeled. And I didn't get them back for a couple of weeks. And when I got them back, they had written my name in marking pen on all my clothes. So they were all ruined, even though they, it, they wrote it right next to the name tapes. Uh, and all my clothes were ruined. The Lord, he had his crown of thorns. He must have felt the pain when the force of those electric bolts tore my baby's brain. What happened to me was I was locked up uh, by the psychiatric system. Uh, they, they said my state of mind was an illness, that I was diseased, that, that I would be sick forever, that I had to take these uh, drugs that made me feel bad. They gave me shock treatment, uh, left me broken, broken. But I trusted in the doctor, I trusted in the nurse. They said if they didn't have their way, things would get much worse. So they put me in a, in a, in a room, an isolation room, and they tra strapped me down in four-point restraints. And there was just, I don't know, if you've ever been in, if you've ever done that, it's like, um, it's like you can't, you can't even scratch yourself if you itch. Uh, eventually, you know, you're trying to hold back from going to the bathroom, and you end up going to the bathroom, you know. Now, they drugged me, so there was times when I wasn't even conscious, but, and, but there would be stretches, I'd be, out, I'd be awake like two or three hours at a time, and it was just pure hell. But how can things be worse than this? It's for her good, they said. What kind of comfort is that for me? My family thought that they were paying for the best. Um, he used the kinds of treatments that were years ago of beating the psychosis out of you. I always felt deep inside of me there was somebody, they didn't know who they were doing this to, that I would get back, that they'd hear from me, that someday they would hear from me. I couldn't do it now. My mind was too confused. I was imprisoned. You know, I was locked up, but I would be back. In August 1988, some 800 ex-psychiatric patients from across the nation, representing thousands more, convened at the University of Utah. Well, no, I guess they get caught up in the stereotype that we're, we can't think, you know, we're, we can't be intelligent because we're mental patients. Dr. Ed Knight is a featured speaker at the conference. He runs the Recipient Empowerment Project, a program of the Mental Health Association, New York State. The project has been responsible for starting scores of self-help groups across the state. What, what do they have in common? Well, people feel they have being treated by the system in common, basically, and stigma and abuse and things like that. That's what people feel they have in common in self-help groups. You are viewed as somebody who is incapable of making choices and, and choosing goals and carrying them through. Um, you're also very, you're at the bottom of the social hierarchy, so people can treat you the way you want, 
and verbal abuse and also physical abuse are very high, especially in hospital settings, simply because nobody will listen to you. If you have a diagnosis, then if the aide swore at you, that must be a part of you. That's a delusion on your part. He or she really didn't swear.